Hi everybody, this is God Sad for the Sad Truth. I was not planning on posting a clip today, but of course the news never sleeps and the tsunami of collective lunacy never sleeps. And so I felt compelled to weigh in on a matter that just broke. Uh, this deals with uh, the case of Omar Khadr, who is a uh, individual who back in 2002, when he was 15 years old and living in uh, Afghanistan, uh, was involved in a firefight against the U.S. military. And during that battle, he killed one soldier and blinded a second. He was then taken to Guantanamo Bay and uh, where he, you know, he spent some time there. And uh, the judgment, let me just read it for you. This is from a, a CBC News article. Uh, from 2010, let me just read you. A U.S. military panel in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, says Canadian-born Omar Khader should serve 40 years in prison for war crimes, a symbolic decision because a pre-trial plea deal caps his sentence at eight years. Khader pleaded guilty in a plea bargain, bargain last Monday to five war crimes charges brought by the U.S. military, including killing Sergeant First Class Christopher Spear in Afghanistan in July 2012 when he was 15 years old. So and anyway, in any case, he was then extradited to Canada uh, and eventually released, completely a free man. So we went from 40 years to being released and having the exact same freedom as everyone else. Uh, but now the story doesn't end there. He then filed a a suit against the Canadian government, uh, and the judgment was just rendered uh, very recently. The Canadian government will pay Omar Khader $10.5 million and issue him an apology. Uh, you could read the details uh, on your own. It, 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 it's simply impossible to... to, to lend it justice. Anything that I say or enunciate to you here uh, will fall short of you simply uh, being exposed to the reality. So someone whose family, by the way, in case you might think that, you know, he's an innocent, innocent child soldier who was, you know, corrupted and brainwashed by someone, um, go and check out his family and what their background is. Boy, are they as Canadian as apple pie. Oh my goodness. Pure Canadian values among this wonderful family. So you can engage in the most profoundly uh, belligerent acts against Canada, or certainly Canadian values, or certainly against a country who is an ally of Canada called the United States. You could kill U.S. soldiers. You could be in Afghanistan living in amongst some really nefarious folks. And yet, eventually, Canada will reward you, will free you, will reward you with $10.5 million, and will officially apologize to you. Uh, that's the Canadian reality. That's the world we live under Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. What I wanted to do also is read for you a letter that I received from someone whom I know. Uh, this is a letter that this gentleman wrote to Prime Minister Trudeau. I've asked him if I could share it with you. He doesn't wish to be identified. I'm, I'm always disappointed when people say this because ultimately, as long as we are too afraid to speak openly and freely, then the, the forces of darkness are provided with the fertile environment to continue to flourish. But in any case, of course, I will abide by his wishes and keep him anonymous. So here's his letter, which I'll read right now. Dear Prime Minister and Most Honorable Trudeau, I am a resident of Toronto and I'm writing to you to inquire about the shocking decision of apologizing and of paying $10.5 million to an individual who has committed a terrorist act in Afghanistan, a country to which he has absolutely no connections. After all, a Canadian is a Canadian, dot, dot, dot. Uh, this is in reference, by the way, to the fact that Justin Trudeau uh, has uh, uh, passed a law, if you'd like, under his government that makes it illegal to, uh, if you have a terrorist who has dual citizenship, so Canadian, let's say Canadian citizenship and uh, Jordanian citizenship, and he, he goes and fights for ISIS and does horrible things, uh, if you then charged him with, you know, uh, terrorism charges, 
you wouldn't be able to uh, revoke his Canadian citizenship because according to Justin Trudeau, a Canadian is a Canadian. I mean, some Canadians uh, go on to play for the Montreal Habs, other Canadians fight for Canada, and others go off and, you know, uh, throw the uh, Shia dogs off buildings in Raqqa. We're all Canadians. It's all part of our multiplicity and multicultural fabric. I fully understand that at the time of his actions, Mr. Khader was a minor. However, Canada didn't send him to Afghanistan, nor did it direct his hand when he lobbed a grenade that killed a medic and blinded another Marine of a country that is allied to ours. Canada treated his family that emigrated here with the same respect that I was treated when I came to this country from the Middle East under your father's government. For those of you who don't know, Justin Trudeau's father is Pierre Elliott Trudeau, who was uh, Prime Minister uh, back in the 70s. According to the CBC, there are more than 150 Canadians who are fighting in jihadist ranks in Somalia and specifically in Syria, aiding and abetting war crimes of the worst kind. The vast majority of them, I suppose, are very young. What will preclude them to use this precedent upon their return and claim to have, quote, brainwashed in order to escape justice? I guess it should have been to have been brainwashed as a Canadian who came to this country from the Middle East and who adopted the values of this country as his own, who raised a family in this country and is proud to call himself a Canadian. I find the decision horrifically appalling and to add insult to injury, we managed to have it broadcasted on the 4th of July. I'm sure that the families of the two U.S. Marines that have been changed forever by the actions of Mr. Khader will be thrilled. Are we frankly taking the position as a Canadian, as Canadians, that Mr. Khader's actions were Canada's fault and neither he nor his surviving parent are to be blamed or sued for his terrorist actions? Seriously? So this is the letter that I received uh, yesterday from this gentleman who, again, is from the Middle East. So there you have it, folks. This is the reality that we live in. Uh, it is exhausting to fight against this on a daily basis and fight against this while being uh, confronted with endless apathy, obfuscation, obstacles. Uh, and so unless people, as I always say, get up at some point and say, this, is, this cannot be tolerated. This lunacy, this rejection of reason, this rejection of all of our values can no longer be tolerated. We wish to live in modern, secular, liberal, free societies. And it is simply impossible to imagine that our governments repeatedly engage in acts that if you created such realities as a satire, no one would believe it. People would think that, come on, this, no one would believe this. But that's our reality. That's what we experience every day. So there you have it, folks. Uh, as you might imagine, I am off on a very much needed break away from social media. Uh, I wish you all a good summer and uh, look forward to speaking to you later this summer. Cheers.